my spirit one god amen hello guys for this week we're going to continue on from our lesson last week and we're going to talk about the 10 plagues that's the 10th plague which is the death of the firstborn we have already covered we have already covered the last nine plagues so let's review them again the first plague was the blood that moses went to the nile and he made all the water turn into blood the second plague was the frogs he summoned frogs and uh, covered all over the land of egypt all over pharaoh next was the nates which were the flies the fleas to cover every every human being as well as the flies that covered they covered everywhere fifth is the livestock so all the livestock that the egyptians are died died then the boils so then the skins became red and plum and like really hurtful to touch then it was the hail the thunder and the hail the ice rocks that fell down from the sky and then it's the locusts that ate all the wheat then the darkness that covered the land for three days okay and remember in each one of them moses would go god god would tell moses tell go to pharaoh tell him to let my people go pharaoh wouldn't listen and then the plague would happen pharaoh would lie said okay i'll let them go and then when moses takes away the the plague pharaoh goes no they, you guys have to stay okay and throughout from one to nine this was the continual thing that kept going on where moses would go to pharaoh pharaoh would say no and then there would be a plague and then the plague would cause a lot of harm to the egyptians but pharaoh hardened his heart and still didn't allow the egyptians to leave so now we're going to go over the last plague which is the plague that makes pharaoh decide this is enough and allows the egyptians do allows the israelites to leave with their stuff too okay so we're going to go on this is all this is the entire chapter is in exodus 12 so if you have your bible please open up to exodus, exodus 12 it is the second book of the of the holy bible and is the 12th chapter of that second book Okay, so as we always say, as we keep on going in this class, we said that everything in the Old Testament represents something in the New Testament. Okay, the New Testament, everything that we know about Christ can be found in the Old Testament. And in this lesson, like all the other previous lessons we had before, we're going to see how Christ is revealed to us in the Old Testament and through the 10th plague and through the Passover. Now we're going to start reading. This is Exodus 12, the verses from 1 to 11. Okay. And now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be the beginning of your months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, and on the tenth of this month, every man, every man shall take for him a lamb according to the house of his fathers. Okay, so a lamb means a sheep. A lamb for the household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, let him and his neighbor next to him next to his house take according to the number of persons, according to each man's need, and you shall make your own count for the lamb. And your lamb shall be blameless, will be without blame without blemish blemish, a male of the first year. Okay, this is very important. Blemish is basically like he has nothing wrong with him. He's pure white, his skin is all white. There is nothing he has for hooves. He walks correctly. He's healthy. It's a healthy, beautiful, young sheep. Okay. And if there's not enough for one small household, they would share. Okay. And you may take it from the sheep or from the goats if they did not have from the sheep. Okay. And now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel. So remember, Israel here is God's chosen people shall kill it at twilight and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lentil, lentil of the house where they will eat of it where they ate it and then they shall eat all the flesh on that night roasted in the fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it do not eat it raw nor boil it all in water but roast it in the fire its heads its legs and its entrails and you shall not let none of its remain until the morning. And what remains of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat of it with the belt of your waist, the sandals of your feet, and the rod in your hand, so that you shall may eat of it in haste, and it is the Lord's Passover. 
Okay, so this is the beginning. This is how God told God told Moses and Aaron, go tell the people, the Israelites, uh, for the tenth month, the tenth of this month, you're going to take a lamb, you're going to bring this lamb, and you're going to make sure everyone has a lamb, and this lamb is going to be pure white, it's going to be beautiful, it's just going to be nothing wrong with it, it's going to be very healthy. If you don't have a lamb, you could get a goat, and then you're going to kill it on the 14th day. And then you're going to eat of, eat of it, and you're going to use the blood, and you're going to put it on the door. So you're going to put it on the two posts and on top of the door. And then everyone will eat of it. Okay? And nothing will remain. All of it has to be eaten, minus the bones. And we're going to get to that later. Okay? And the, burn, the bones have to be bone, burned. Okay? And this is what is called the Lord's Passover. And we're going to see why is it called the Passover. Okay, and so this is basically the instructions that God gave to them, that they will take the blood of the lamb, they will put it on top and on the sides. Okay, then they will be also on this side as well, that they will put the blood of the lamb here. And we're going to figure out why is God telling Moses and Aaron to tell the people to do this. Okay, but first we're going to go over, this is, this is a theme that we see in the Old Testament, where God asks for a living sacrifice. Okay, a living offering to God. Okay, and usually this is what God had done for Adam and Eve. And when we went over this, we said what? That for them to get the animal clothing, God must have killed the animals that were there and made the tunics. And as it says, Genesis 3, 321, the Lord made tunics of skin and clothed them. He clothed what? Adam and Eve while they were going away from the garden. And we see that what? This was a symbol. This was an offering to God because Abel... Sacrifice to God, the firstborn of his flock. Okay, remember in the verse previously, it has to be the male of the first of the first year. So it has to be the firstborn of the flock, the firstborn of the flock that the Israelites had. And we see what we see Abel do the same thing, where he had the first the firstborn of the flock and of their fat, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering. Okay, because what Abel gave God what is good. And what it was the best that he had. The same thing, this is what God's asking the Israelites now. Give me the best lamb that you have and sacrifice it to me. And let it be the firstborn. Okay, so we see what God sacrificed an animal. God sacrificed an animal for Adam and Eve for them to have the clothes that, they're, that they wore. Second, Abel told them, God told, God sacrificed to Abel, the firstborn of his flock. And then we see what? God asking Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, his firstborn from Sarah. Okay, and we told them, and we see it here, offer him there as a burnt offering on the mountain, on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. Okay, so we see what, we see a pattern. We see what, there's an animal being sacrificed, and it's the firstborn of the animals. Okay, and we're going to see how does this relate to Jesus Christ, and how does this relate to the Passover itself, and why did God tell them to do this? Okay, so now we're going to move on. And we're going to see, this is the reason why God told them that you have to have the Passover. For I will pass through, this is in Exodus 12, you will see on the screen, Exodus 12, 12 to 13. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, so the 14th night of that, that, that month, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, okay, both man and beast. And against all the gods of the Egyptians, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on your house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over it. And the plague shall not destroy, not, shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Okay, saying what? The 14th night after they put the blood on top of the door, God's going to come and he's going to kill every single firstborn of the house of Egypt in Egypt. It doesn't matter if it's a man, it doesn't matter if it's a man, if it's a human or an animal. Okay? That night God's going to come and kill every every firstborn, except for he will not touch the houses that have the blood on the door. Okay? If they have the blood on the door, the blood of the lamb on the door, God's not going to touch that house. Okay? The angel will pass by and it will keep going. Until it goes to each house, and if the house has blood on the door, it will not enter. Okay? This is the tenth plague. This is what God is intending for it to happen. Okay? Now why? Why is the lamb so important? The lamb here represents Christ. 
okay? The lamb here, as we said, everything in the Old Testament represents something in the New Testament. This Old Testament, this Passover, the Passover lamb represents Christ. Why? Because we'll see here, here are the comparisons, okay? So these three, if you see here, this is the first verse, your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, okay? Jesus Christ had no sin, so he had no blemish, and he is the Son of God. He is the only Son of God, okay? So we see here what? The comparison between the lamb and Jesus Christ. And you will not, and this is, this is another translation, you shall not let none of it remain until the morning, nor shall you break a bone of it, okay? When Jesus Christ... When Jesus Christ was on the cross, and later on we, we are going to celebrate, celebrate, we're going to remember the crucifixion. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, none of his bones were broken. Okay? They went to go break his bones, but they already saw that he was dead because he was stabbed on the side with the spear, and blood and water came out, and that's how they knew he was dead. So none of his bones were broken. The same way that the lamb in the Passover, none of its bones were broken, none of its bones were eaten, or anything like that. Okay? And we see this now also, that when I see the blood, I will pass over it, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you. Okay? This is the same thing as Jesus Christ died for our sins, and we are saved from the eternal death. Okay? That through Jesus Christ's blood, through Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us, we do not we do not have, we are saved from the eternal death. Just the same way the lamb, the blood of the lamb on the door, saved the Hebrews and their, and their firstborn, their first son, from being killed by the angel that came through for the 10th plague. Okay, we're going to go over this again. So one, the requirement for the lamb that God wanted, it had to be bl blemish, without no blemish, okay? So what? Christ had no sin. Okay, at the same time, it had to be a male and the firstborn. And we say what? Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Okay, the third, the second thing is what? No bones were broken. Okay, and because no bones were broken, the same way Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was crucified, none of his bones were broken on the cross. Okay, the third thing was what? The blood saved the people, the Israelites, from the, from the angel. Okay, it's the same way. As when Jesus Christ died on the cross for us, he saved us from sin and he saved us from the eternal death. Okay. Now we'll move on. Okay. And I showed you guys this illustration and that what? That through Jesus Christ, we are enabled. Okay. That we are saved from our sins. And God, that through Christ's death, we are able enough to reconnect with God because Jesus Christ is God. Okay, he saves us. He saves us from sin, which sin is death. And being separated from God is death. And so Jesus Christ unites us back. Remember, we were talking about this during Adam and Eve, where through Jesus Christ, because they sinned, they separated themselves from God. But now through Jesus Christ and through his death, we are now reun reunited with God through Jesus Christ, who is God. Okay. Now we'll continue on. Now this is this is more of the instructions to from God to uh, Aaron and Moses. Okay. So this is Exodus twelve fourteen to twenty. So this day shall be a more a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. We're going to talk about this in in the next slide. And you shall keep it as a feast by the everlasting ordinance. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the first day, on the first day you shall remove the leaven from your houses. And for whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. And on the first day there shall be a holy vocation, and on the seventh day there shall be a holy on the first day there shall be a holy vocation, and on the seventh day there shall be a holy vocation for you. No matter of work shall be done on them, but what they must be, but what everyone must eat is only that what what only may be prepared by you. So this is what this is the Sabbath day, okay? The seventh day, the Sabbath day, they got prepared, and he told what the Jews do not eat of this day, do not eat of this day. Well, the only thing has to be focusing on God. There should be no work done in this day, and all you should be contributing is unto God. 
okay, and why? And so you shall observe the feast of the unleavened bread, and for on this same day I have brought you, I will brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as an everlasting ordinance. And in the first month, on the fourteenth day, or the fourteenth day of the month at the evening, you shall eat the unleavened bread until tw till the twenty-first day of this month at the evening. For the seventh day, no leaven shall be found in the houses, since whoever eats what is leaven, that same person shall be cut from the congregation of Israel. Whether he is a stranger or native of the land, you shall eat nothing leaven, in all your dwellings you shall eat the unleavened bread. Okay, so this signifies the Passover that the Jews will have later on, that will remember, Christ, remember God bringing them out of Egypt. Okay, and for us in the New Testament, this is the liturgy. Okay, we celebrate the Passover in church today through Pascha, through Holy Week. Okay, and when Holy Week, we remember what? Christ coming down, dying for us, and being crucified for us, and dying for our sins. Okay, now we celebrate this feast, and we celebrate this feast that they say, and so this day shall be a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord through throughout your generations and we say this in the in the liturgy we say throughout from generation to generation okay this is communion this is what what this is where passover it connects to communion and this is where the feast is the communion that we eat and the sacrifice that we are eating is the body and blood of jesus christ so that we could have life in him okay so we'll repeat this over so this memorial, when, when God tells Moses and Aaron to tell them, he says, So this day shall be a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. This is the Passover for the Jews, and for us is what this Holy Week is when we remember Christ dying for us, his passion for us. And this feast that we celebrate is communion, and the sacrifice that we are eating, the body and blood, is the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, so we see in the Old Testament, even in the second book of the Holy Bible in Exodus, we see the connection between what God gave to the people in the Old Testament that reveals to us Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Okay, the Old Testament and the New Testament, they're not separate, they're together. And they only make sense together is if you look at it through Jesus Christ and the person of Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ did for us. Okay. So now we're going to continue on. We saw in the first half of Exodus 12, we saw God telling Moses, and now Moses is going to tell the people, the Israelites, he's going to tell the elders of the Israelites what are they are supposed to do so that when the angel of death comes into the land of Egypt, no one, no Israelite, no firstborn of the house is killed. Okay, so this is Exodus 12, 21 to 28. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take the lambs of yourselves according to your families and kill the Passover lamb. Okay? And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two doors posts with the blood that is in the basin. So essentially, just mark D, mark the doors like this. These are the two doors, and then this is above. The laden is above the door. Okay? And none of you shall go out of the door of the house until the morning. Okay? So they're not supposed to leave during the 14th night. They are not supposed to leave the entire, the entire night. For the Lord will pass through it to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your house houses to strike you. Okay, the destroyer here, meaning the angel of death. And you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. Okay, and this will be a tradition. An ordinance is a holiday or a tradition that they are going to do forever. So every time that it comes to this month, as they said with the bread as well, they are going to make the lamb and they're going to eat of the lamb. So that way they remember what the Lord has done for them in Egypt. This is what the Passover, the Lord passing over the house of the Israelites. And it will come to pass 
when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, just as he has promised, remember, back then Ab God made a promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as well as Joseph, that their land they will inherit the land that was the land of milk and honey. And that is what that is what God and Moses' plan is right now. They are trying to get the Israelites out of Egypt into the land of Canaan, where the land is of milk and honey. Okay? That you shall keep this service. The service meaning that you will continue the Passover. And it shall be when your children say to you, What do you mean by this service? And you shall say, It is the Passover, the sacrifice of the Lord, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our households. Okay, so when they asked them, Why are we doing this? When the children who are not born yet, when they ask the people who lived in Egypt during this time, they're going to tell them, we do this to remember God who passed over the Israelites in Egypt and struck the Egyptians and delivered them from the household. Okay, so the people bowed their heads and worshipped. And then the children of Israel went away and did so. Just as the Lord had commanded Moses, so they did. So they did exactly what Moses they did exactly what Moses and Aaron told them to do. They put they took the blood, they they got the lamb, the lamb that was without blemish. They took it, a pure male male boy, the first boy. They killed it, they ate of it, and they took the blood and they put the blood on the door, as you see on top. Okay? On the two sides and on top. Okay, so that the angel of death pass by them while it's going in the land of Egypt. Okay, and here is a picture just illustrating it. Okay, the angel sees the blood, sees the blood on the door. One second. Okay, because he sees the blood on the door, he does not go by the, he does not go into the house. So he's passing over the house. Okay, he's passing over the house, going on to the next one to see if there's a blood on the door or not. Okay? And now we'll see what this is, what happens with... We're going to see at the end, we're going to finish the next slide, it's the last slide. We're going to finish off with this, and then we're going to continue on next week with what happens when Moses leaves Egypt, when they eventually they do leave Egypt, and once they leave Egypt, and what happens to the Egyptians and Pharaoh and all, and all this. Okay? So it came to pass at midnight, so as the Lord said that the angel would pass by, that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Okay, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captives who was in the dungeons. Okay, and all the firstborns of the livestock. Okay, so not only were it just the boys, the boys in the first boys, the oldest boys in the families, and every Egyptian, even from, from from Pharaoh to the people in the jails, it was also the firstborn of all the livestock. Okay? And so Pharaoh rose in the night, and he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead in Egypt for the Egyptians. Okay? For the Egyptians, this is what happened to them. Okay, they lost all their their sons. Okay, and this is a very important thing, especially in history, where the pharaoh usually the pharaoh is the king, and so he would pass his crown to his son. He would pass his crown to his firstborn son. So to lose your firstborn son is to lose your kingdom. Okay, and that was a very big deal because they want to keep the fam the power, the king, the kingship in the family. So him losing his son means he's losing his, the heir to his throne. Okay, so when Pharaoh died, his firstborn son was supposed to be the next Pharaoh. But because now the firstborn son has now died, there is no, they don't, they don't know who is going to take the, take the crown. And it may be somebody that's not in the family. Okay, so this is very d devastating. Okay, where people usually, everything that belongs to the family goes to the firstborn. And usually it's the boy and usually the oldest boy. Who is the first? Who is the firstborn? But since he is now dead, it brings a big trouble. And not only that, they lose a son. They lose nobody. They lose. They lose something very precious to someone very precious to them. And because of that, there's a great cry. We know that later on, this is what happens to the Pharaoh because of this allows the, the Israelites 
and their stuff and everything that they have and he tells them to get out get out of egypt and we'll lay down and see what happens with pharaoh and moses when it comes to the red sea okay so just review this the passover is meant to be about jesus christ is meant to symbolize jesus christ where through, because jesus christ is our lamb and because through his blood we are saved from the eternal death that we see that in the old testament it shows us what what is jesus christ what, what is he what is he for us okay and through this example through through the old testament we could see what is going to be what's going to happen in the new testament with jesus christ dying for us having none of his bones broken and his blood and his body and blood being what we partake in so that we could have life in him and avoid eternal death okay in the name of the father son holy spirit one god amen i'll see you guys next week bye